Hello and welcome to the FA Women's National League show, the weekly show where we look at everything that has happened over the last seven days in the third and fourth tiers of uh, women's football here in England and look ahead to what we can look forward to over the next week. My name is Chris Gadsby. I'm here every Tuesday at 6pm bringing you the very latest from the FAWNL. We're going to start this week. There's not a great deal of news, but there's a little bit uh, to talk about this week, uh, mainly surrounding points deductions. Um, so we'll start uh, in the Southern Premier Division. Cardiff City have been deducted another point uh, for not fulfilling a fixture due to COVID. Uh, that's on the 19th of December, uh, the game relating to that. So they've had another point taken off them. Uh, Barnsley have been deducted three points and Portishead have also been deducted a point. So uh, you'll notice throughout uh, the tables when we go through them in a bit uh, that there are points deductions uh, there as well. Uh, we've also had the cup and plate semi-final draws. Um, so we'll bring those up now. And these happened uh, about what, 10 minutes ago. Um from uh, when I'm recording this. Uh, these ties are to be played on March the 6th. Uh, so in the Cup, it's Southampton against Crawley Wasps and Liverpool Feds against either Brighouse Town or Huddersfield Town. In the Plate, it's Cheltenham Town against Nottingham Forest and Sporting Cowser against AFC Wimbledon. Uh, so a national draw uh, now in the semi-finals. Uh, so it's Southampton and Crawley Wasps, uh, Liverpool Feds and Brighouse or Huddersfield Town. Then in the plates, Cheltenham Town against Nottingham Forest or Sporting Cowza against AFC Wimbledon. Uh, let's go then into the Northern Premier Division. It's going to be quite a short episode this week um, because of postponements. Uh, so, Hull City, now Wolverhampton Wanderers 5. Goals for Wolverhampton coming uh, in the 8th minute to Anna Price, 15th minute to Amber Hughes, 61st minute to Marie Gauntlet. Uh, 89th minute to Amy Dickon and then a second goal for Amber Hughes in the 90th minute. Uh, as you can see there, all the other games uh, postponed in the uh, Northern Premier Division. Uh, let's go through then to the Northern table. Uh, that victory for Wolves sees them go back top of the table above Derby County and Fylde. Uh, and they've got two games in hand. So Wolves will be looking to get themselves further ahead. They beat Hull City, who remain at the bottom now on a minus 37 goal difference. Southern Premier Division then, a couple of nil-nils in there. Bridgewater United nil, Gillingham nil, Chichester and Chelsea 2, Plymouth Argyle 1, London Bees 5, Cardiff City 1 and Milton Keynes Dons nil, Ipswich Town nil. Um, so rather than going to Bridgewater against Gillingham being a nil-nil game, we'll go to Chichester and Chelsea against Plymouth Argyle. Uh, goals for Chichester and Celsi coming in the 44th minute to Sophie Phelps. Uh, then an own goal in the 47th minute gave them a 2-0 uh, lead. Well, uh, their second goal. Uh, no information yet about Plymouth Argyles. Not sure uh, when their scorer was. Uh, then we go to uh, London Bees 5, Cardiff City 1. Uh, goals then to London Bees. Uh, coming to uh, Joe Wilson in the 11th minute, uh, then Florence Gamby 49th minute, Danielle Puddifoot 56th minute from the penalty spot, 67th minute an own goal from Cardiff. Uh, they then got one back, Corey Williams in the 85th minute made it 4-1, uh, but then London Bees rounded the scoring off in the uh, also in the 85th minute Cara Lapp. Uh, getting the fifth goal for the London Bees. And uh, there at the bottom, Milton Keynes Dons against Ipswich Town, uh, also goalless. Uh, in the Southern Premier Division, then a couple of swaps. Uh, London Bees against Bridgewater United have swapped places. Uh, Milton Keynes Dons and Plymouth Argyle have also swapped after MK Dons got that 0-0 draw with Ipswich. Uh, you'll see there Cardiff down to 17 points. They were on 18. Uh, as I said, they've been deducted another point uh, for uh, failing to fulfil a fixture with COVID. Division 1 North, then we have midweek games in the Division 1 uh, North as well. Durham Sestra 6, Norton Stockton Agents 2, Barnsley 2, Leeds United 3, Stockport County 1, Chorley 2, 
Uh, and then uh, yesterday, or sorry, on Sunday, as this goes out, uh, Barnsley against Stockport County was postponed. Chester Street Town 2, Bradford City 2, Durham Cestral 1, Newcastle United 2, and FC United of Manchester against Chorley also postponed. If we go back then to uh, some of the um, results from midweek, uh, we'll start Durham Sestra against Norton and Stockton Ancients. Uh, Durham Sestra opening the scoring in the ninth minute thanks to Lily Crossweight. Uh, and then on the 40th minute, Bianca Owens equalised for Norton and Stockton Ancients, making it 1-1. That's how they went in at half time. Jordan Atkinson then got her first of the game on the 49th minute. Uh, Jennifer Knowles in the 58th minute and Amy Richardson in the 59th minute made it 4 1. Uh, then it was 5 1, Jordan Atkinson getting her second of the game. Uh, 5 2, thanks to Lily Patrick getting Norton Stockton Ancients second. But then Jordan Atkinson finished her hat trick uh, five minutes from time to make it 6 2 to Durham Sestra. Uh, then we go to uh, Barnsley against Leeds United. Barnsley 2 0 up at half time in this one. Ruby Jex Oldfield in the fourth minute and Emily Pierpont on the half hour mark gave them a 2 0 lead, but Leeds completed the comeback. 47th minute Sarah Dobby, 54th minute Katie Ramsden, and 85th minute Bridie Hannon uh, completed the comeback for Leeds and gave them all three points. Stockport County 1, Chorley 2. A goal for Stockport County coming to substitute Maria Figueiredo. Uh, goals for Chorley, one in each half. 43rd minute to Charlotte Evans and second minute of added time at the end of the game to Emma Hickson. Uh, then at the weekend, Chester Street Town and Bradford City uh, drawing two goals apiece. Uh, goals for Chester Street Town coming to Katie Ellison and Nicole Havery. Uh, goals to Bradford City coming to Katie Woodcock in the 49th minute and Charlotte Stewart in the 59th minute from the penalty spot. Uh, only other game this weekend uh, in Division 1 North. Uh, Newcastle United running out 2-1 winners against Durham Sestra. Goals, uh, for, well, goals for Newcastle coming to Katie Barker and Casey Elson. Durham Sestra's goal coming in the 41st minute to Grace Eyre. Well, that means for the Division 1 North, quite a bit of movement. Uh, Newcastle United and Liverpool Feds, they swap positions. Uh, Durham Sestra and Norton Stockton Ancients also swap positions. Durham Sestra, of course, winning over uh, Norton Stockton Ancients in the week. Newcastle United winning at the weekend. They now go point clear of Liverpool Feds, but have uh, played a game more once again. Uh, then towards the bottom, you notice Barnsley having dropped a couple of places. That's entirely down to the fact that uh, they've been deducted three points uh, overnight. Uh, so they're now down to seven rather than the 10 that they uh, should be on. Uh, and as you can see there at the moment, that makes all the difference because they've gone from being out of the relegation zone to well in it. Uh, and uh, although they have played uh, two games more than Bradford, they do still have a game in hand over Chester La Street Town. So all not lost for Barnsley by any stretch of the imagination. But... Uh, it's uh, yeah, not ideal for them. They've been deducted three points. Perhaps they might get it uh, given back to them, uh, as Portsmouth did a few weeks ago, if they can produce the correct uh, evidence against the discretion. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens over the coming weeks. Division 1 Midlands then, plenty to talk about here. Uh, including a, a high-scoring midweek game. But we'll start at the top. Bold Miss St. Michael's 3, Solly Hall Moors 0 uh, on Tuesday. Burton Albion 0, Long Eat United 3, and Biddeford United 0, Leaford Athletic 10 on Wednesday. Uh, the Thursday game was postponed. Biddeford United 1, Long Eat United 0. This is all on Sunday now. Bold Miss St. Michael's 3, Wemtown 0, Peterborough United 3, Burton Albion 2, and Solly Hall Moors 4, Lincoln City 2. Uh, let's start then at the top. Boldmere St. Michael's against Solihull Moors. Boldmere St. Michael's three goals coming to Evie Billingsley, Jessica Lundy and Hayley Sutton. Uh, move through then into Wednesday. Long Eaton United uh, yet to announce any of their information about their 3-0 win away at Burton Albion. So we'll go to Leafield Athletics, 10-goal victory over Biddeth United. A uh, hat-trick for Daisy May Clements, 6th, 13th and 55th minute. A brace for Chloe Shirley, 24th and 40th minute. Uh, goals for Katie Johnson, Michelle McCormack and Chloe Barker-Duffy. Brings it up to 8. 
Uh, there was an own goal uh, in the third minute. Uh, so that was the, the very first goal of the game. That was what uh, that brings their total up to nine. And then uh, a goal for Samantha Baker from the penalty spot right before half time uh, rounds out the 10 for Leafield Athletic. Uh, get through then into Sunday. Uh, we'll go to a bit of United again. This time beat Long Eaton United by a goal to nil. But there's no information about that fixture as of yet. Uh, Bolmir St. Michaels against Wem Town. Goals for Bolmir St. Michaels coming from Stephanie Weston and substitutes Philippa Wilson and Jessica Lundy. Uh, Peter United 3, Burton Albion 2. Uh, there's no information about that game either yet. Uh, and Solihull Moors against Lincoln City. Uh, brace for Jessica Russiu for Lincoln City. Uh, fifth and 60th minute, uh, but four goals for Solihull Moor. Zoe Creaney, Annie Highway, Jana Russell Cartwright, and Leah Sivright uh, giving uh, Solihull Moors a 4 2 victory over Lincoln City. What that means for the table is everything pretty much stays where it is um, with the likes of Doncaster uh, Rovers Bells uh, not uh, playing. Bowman St. Michael's. Uh, getting a win at the uh, weekend, as we said, against Wem Town uh, and Solly Hall Moors. So they got six points, uh, but with Long Eaton United also picking up uh, three points in midweek, uh, the two sides stay where they are in the uh, league standings. Uh, towards the bottom there, Solly Hall Moors, Leafield Athletic climb a couple of places out, uh, or in Leafield Athletic's case, out of the bottom three. Wem Town drop into it. Uh, Birds and Albion now find themselves a point away from safety. Leafford Athletic, of course, only played nine games so far this season in the league. Uh, so they've got uh, up to six games in hand. I mean, that's worth 18 points and puts them on 30 potentially if they were to win all of them. Uh, so Leafford Athletic, you would say, a bit out of position at the moment. Division 1 South East then. Stevenage 0, Billericay Town 1, uh, Cambridge City 0, London Seaward 0, Harlow Town 1, Actonians 2, and Kent Football United uh, one, Cambridge United three. What well, means for uh, the results? Then Billericay Town uh, haven't announced their lineup against Stevenage yet. Cambridge City against London Seaward was nil nil. Harlow Town uh, haven't announced their scorers uh, yet in their game against Actonians. Uh, but Actonians, Mizuki Hirakuni uh, in the 33rd minute and Sharon Odafin in the 66th minute gave them the three points. Uh, and Cambridge United get past Kent Football United by three goals to one. But there's no information about that one either yet. So let's go to the Division 1 South East table. Actonians with that victory lifts themselves above AFC Wimbledon, who of course were playing in the Cup. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, so Actonians now into third. Cambridge United with their victory uh, moved themselves past uh, London Seaward as well. Two points clear of them at the bottom. It's as you were, uh, Enfield Town outside of the bottom four on goal difference only, but it is a very strong goal difference, minus three to Harlow Town's minus 30. Uh, Division one South West, then we'll go uh, into the final league we're going to look at. AFC Bournemouth put eight past Porter's Edge. Local Athletic won as Southampton women five. Pool Town nil, Maidenhead United five. And Swindon Town nil, Chesham United three. Uh, would love to give you uh, more information about Bournemouth's eight goal uh, victory, uh, eight goals to two against Porter's Ed, but there's no information about it on the website yet. Uh, so we'll go to Larkhall Athletic against Southampton women. Only got information about Larkhall in this one as well. Uh, Jesse Willis in the fourth minute, uh, which what seems like opens the scoring, but there's no information about Southampton women yet. Uh, Maidenhead United against Paul Town. Uh, no information about Maidenhead United yet, so I can't give you any scorers on that one. And it's the same situation with Chesham United. So we'll go straight to the table, uh, where apart from Porter's Ebb being docked to point, uh, some things have, have moved around, but nobody's actually uh, moved positions other than the points changing. So Bournemouth win, they go from 24 to 27. Southampton women uh, win, but as do Chesham United, and the goal difference means they both stay where they are. Maidenhead United also win. Uh, so the teams at the top winning. Uh, Cheltenham Town, of course, playing in the Cup. 
Um, so second through to fifth, all winning, and they all get three points, and they all stay where they are. Uh, Porter Z, as you say, as you can see, there deducted one point. Uh, we assume by for failing to fulfil a, a fixture due to COVID, uh, which would keep it in keeping with the, the points deductions that Cardiff have got over the course of the season so far. So that will do it for the um, the results. Let's now have a look at the cup results. We'll start in the uh, FAWNL Cup. These are the quarterfinals. Uh, Brighouse Town against Huddersfield Town was postponed because of a waterlogged pitch. Uh, that's now being played on the 16th, which is a week on Wednesday. Uh, Crawley Wasps won Oxford United nil. Uh, so Crawley Wasps are getting the better of that tie. Uh, but there's no information about the game as of yet. Uh, AFC filed of the um, Northern Premier Division, losing by two goals to nil at home to Liverpool Feds. Uh, Chantel Thompson, 64th minute, and Paige Cole in the 91st minute, giving Liverpool Feds the victory and moving them into the semi-finals. And Southampton won, hashtag United nil. Uh, goal coming to substitute Katie Rood. Uh, in that one for Southampton. Great uh, effort by Hashtag United to uh, only lose by a goal to nil. Uh, so uh, that's the results in the Cup. In the plate, Anik Town, uh, again, another great performance from then in the Cup. It's a shame they can't back it up in the league. Uh, losing only by a goal to nil to Nottingham Forest. Uh, Charlotte Steggles uh, with the goal in the 67th minute uh, for Nottingham Forest. Leafed Athletic against Sporting Cows. Extra time was needed in that one. Daisy May Clements uh, getting the only goal for Leafield Athletic with a four by three goals to one. Sporting Cows haven't announced uh, any of their signings yet. So we get to Cheltenham Town 2, Exeter City 1. Uh, Lacey J. Liggett for Cheltenham Town, 40th and 57th minute uh, was what brought them over Exeter City, who were taking the lead in the third minute, thanks to Stephanie Beck. So Cheltenham Town against Nottingham Forest in the semi-final. But the game of the day, Portsmouth against AFC Wimbledon. They needed penalties uh, to get past this one. It's a shame that uh, Portsmouth haven't uh, announced uh, their lineup yet, but it was 2-2 at the end of uh, normal time. Emily Donovan, uh, sorry, Ashley Hinks in the 54th minute, Emily Donovan in the 67th minute uh, put uh, Wimbledon ahead. Portsmouth then pegged them back. Uh, then they went ahead in extra time. And it was with almost the last kick of the game, Rosie Russell for AFC Wimbledon uh, on the half-hour mark of extra time, pulled it back to 3-3, and then Wimbledon win by seven goals to six on penalties to set up a semi-final tie. Uh, we've seen this already. I'll go through it again. The FA uh, Women's National League Cup semi-final, Southampton against Crawley Wasps, Liverpool Feds against Brighouse Town or Huddersfield Town. In the plate, it's Cheltenham Town against Nottingham Forest and Sporting Cowser against AFC Wimbledon. Ties to be played on the 6th of March, uh, which is in about a month's time. Let's then go through and have a look at the fixtures coming up over the next uh, seven days. It's uh, pretty much all uh, just at the weekend. Brighouse Town against Stoke City in the Northern Premier Division. Uh, that one is uh, a relatively uh, well, kind of middle of the table uh, Fight that one, 7th against ninth. Burnley against Hull is 4th against 13th. AFC Fylde against Nottingham Forest is a big one at the, towards the top of the table. 3rd against 5th. Loughborough Lightning against West Brom is 10th against 8th. Sheffield FC taking on Middlesbrough is a relegation 6-pointer, 12th against 11th. And Wolves top of the table taking on mid-table Huddersfield Town. In the Southern Premier Division, it's Bridgewater United against Southampton. That's third against sixth. Cardiff City take on MK Dons. That's a big game towards the bottom, ninth against 11th. Chester and Celsi against Keensham Town. Uh, that's 13th against 10th. Crawley Wasps against Ipswich Town is seventh against the top of the table. Ipswich Town five points clear at the moment. Gillingham against Plymouth Argyle, that's fourth against 12th. And London Bees against Oxford United is fifth against second. Into the Division 1 Midlands then, Bolmius St Michael's against Peterborough United. Burton Albion against Lincoln City. 
Doncaster Rovers Bells against Biddeford United, Leafield Athletic take on Sporting Cowser, and Long Eaton United against Wem Town. Uh, Doncaster Rovers Bells against Biddeford United is top versus bottoms. That's uh, uh, going to be one to look out for. Burton Albion against Lincoln City as well is fourth against 11th. Uh, Leafford Athletic against Sporting Cowser, seventh against ninth. Long Eaton United against Wem Town is third against tenth. Bournemouth St Michael's against Peterborough is second against sixth. So there's a couple of uh, top versus bottom clashes in that one. Division 1 North, we've got a midweek game. Bradford City against FC United of Manchester. That's 10th against 8th. Annick Town then take on FC United of Manchester at the weekend. That's 12th against 8th. Bradford City against Barnsley is a relegation uh, battle again. 10th versus 11th as it stands at the moment. Chorley against Newcastle United. 6th versus the top of the table. Durham Sestra take on Liverpool Feds. 4th against 2nd. Leeds United against Norton and Stockton Ancients is third against fifth. And uh, Stockport County against Chester Street Town, seventh against ninth. Into the Division 1 South East, then two leagues to go. Uh, AFC Wimbledon against Stevenage is fourth against 12th. AFC Wimbledon still not having given up hope about getting to the top of the table with a couple of games in hand. Actonians against Enfield Town is third versus ninth. Harlow Town against London Seaward, 10th against 7th. Hashtag United against Cambridge United, top of the table. Hashtag United uh, against 6th placed Cambridge United. Uh, Norwich City against Kent Football United is 11th against 13th. Crucial game for two sides near the bottom. And Queen's Park Rangers against Cambridge City is 5th against 8th in the mid table. Uh, only eight games to go uh, for Hashtag United and Billericay Town who uh, look to be the two teams that are going to fight it out in the southeast. Uh, so that one could well go right down to the wire. Uh, four games in the Division 1 Southwest. Uh, AFC Bournemouth against Mainhead United, second against fifth. Cheshire United take on Paul Town, that's fourth against tenth. Southampton Women against Cheltenham Town is third against first. And Swindon Town against Exeter City is eighth against seventh. So the big... Uh, fixture there is towards the top. Southampton women in third. They are currently 12 points behind Cheltenham Town, who are lead, but uh, they've got three games in hand. So if they were to win this one, it would bring them back to within touching distance, lose it, and the gap goes up to 15 points. And it's starting to look a bit more comfortable for Cheltenham. Uh, as we know from speaking uh, to Cheltenham uh, as manager Tom uh, a couple of weeks ago, they've very much of the mindset of win every game, we're up. Um, so that's uh, Cheltenham's mindset at the moment. Um, it's going to be a tough one, though, away at Southampton Women. And that is going to do it uh, for all of the fixtures uh, and results from this uh, week of the FA Women's National League, episode number 26, uh, this is. As always, if you've got any uh, suggestions uh, for what you want to see on the show or any improvements, then let me know uh, either down in the comments below or on Twitter at Chris underscore Gadsby. Uh, keep yourselves uh, safe. It's very cold out there at the moment. So if you're going to go to a women's football game, make sure you uh, wrap up warm and, and take a hot uh, drink with you or you know, just something to, to keep yourself warm. As my uncle would say, uh, you can't beat a Bovril, um, but I have to disagree with him on that one. Uh, but importantly, of course, keep supporting your local women's football team. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back next Tuesday at 6pm, the usual time, bringing you all the very latest from the third and fourth tiers of women's football here in England. Goodbye. <laughs>